Okay, so this is our QuickBook Online certification intro video. And we'll do a quick PowerPoint um, going over the overview of the topics that are covered in this exam. So you just finished your associate's degree and you're thinking about getting into an entry level accounting position, like a bookkeeper or accounts receivable clerk, accounts payable with clerk, or maybe even an office manager. Um, being certified in QuickBooks Online really looks great on your resume. All right. Um, the first step is you have to sign up for a free QBOA account. We discussed that in the intro. This is a link on how to um, get to that and sign up for the free account with your, you'll set up an email and, and sign up for a free account. And then you can start um, preparing for the certification. So after attending a computerized accounting course and or gaining some experience out in the field, which would be most practical, you would start preparing yourself for the exam. It's a 60 question multiple choice exam divided into eight different sections. So please visit the Pro Advisor tab in your QBOA account to view the self-paced video training offered there and to participate at least in at least two webinars before taking the exam. So let's, let's look at that because I have mine up right here for you to Look at. So if you go in the navigation um, pane over here, two down will be the pro advisor and you have the benefits and the training. So this is the training session. And the first thing that I want to discuss with you is you see this little pin. I mean, it might look the interface might look a little different by the time you but this is still kind of new. So it's right here pinned. Recertification is now open. So if you were certified prior to November 1st, 2019, you will need to recertify. And what happens is it on a yearly basis or whenever they update and, and provide new features, you would have to recertify within a certain amount of time. So anybody who was recertified, who got their certification prior to November 1st, by August 31st needs to recertify on any new topics. The good thing is, like I just said, it's new topics. So if you've passed all the sections of the exam, then you only have to be questioned on anything new that was added to QBO. All right, so if you look down here, the first section is, um, an introduction to QuickBooks Online for accountants. And there's five different modules here that you would go through and do the learning. They also have webinars. So you can click on here and see what webinars are available and sign up for those. Okay. And then this is the section that I'm discussing right here, the QuickBooks Online certification, the eight modules. So this is um, uh, for 14 and a half CPE credits. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, and this is a uh, an improved scenario based on training that teaches you the most used and key features that you would need in supporting your clients. And so there's self-paced modules here. I'll scroll down so you can see that. So you have QuickBooks solutions for clients, client onboarding, special client onboarding tasks. Man. So these are the different sections in the, and so they have, um, it, it kind of walks you through a tutorial and then it has videos there for you and questions for you to answer to prepare you for the exam. They also have webinars, so I'm gonna click on that. And so let's see what they have available for right now. So on May 11th, they have um, online a QuickBook Online certification exam prep course, part one from two to five. And then May 13th, they have part two from two to five. So you click over here and register. And then if you needed, if you wanted to or needed the CPAE credits, you would just let them know that. And then when you completed the course and you were there from beginning to end, um, anybody who's familiar with this already, when you do the training, they'll tend, you know, they might ask you, you know, every so often to just click in for attendance. And as long as you've done that, then you um, are able to get your CPE credits. And that all depends on some are required. Some people just do it to have it. Um, so you're always, I always encourage, um, my students that go for it. Yeah, go ahead. Tell them you need CPE credit and keep that certification. You have no idea with that certificate, you'd be able to prove that you did. You have no idea what your, your goals are for the next year or two. So you want to make sure to hold on to all those things and, um, you know, take into consideration that you might go into further into the field and then have to, it all depends on what state you're at and what the requirements are. You might have to um, have, just like I said, I'm an educator. I have to have a certain number of um, professional development hours. And that's just to show that you're on top of what you're doing in your profession. And um, and it, it doesn't hurt, especially with the fact that there's things are changing all the time, tax laws, um, procedures within software applications. So you should stay on top of things. Um, and so you see here I am certified. So you'd click over here and um, download your certificate. But if I wanted to revisit any topics, then I can come over here to revisit and it'll bring me back to um, 
what I was saying, you would just go through and you see, I can look at one with you. Um, so let's look at client onboarding. So here's seven lessons. So when you click on this, you would, I've already done it. Um, so you would go to resume and it would bring you back to that tutorial. Now, um, it doesn't show it here, but if you're just starting, you might be a little confusing. Like, why isn't this, you know, moving? You have to click over here to the plus sign. I mean, to the check mark, and then you're able to um, maneuver inside here. So there you go. So I click the check mark and now I'll scroll down and I'm going to read everything that it says here. And then after I've read it, I click next. And then some of them might have videos for you as or interactive questions. It's a great way. And it really addresses, I'm going to say 80 to 90% of what's covered in the exam. I don't, I'm not convinced it covers a hundred percent, but it covers about 80 to 90% of what is in the exam. So we explored that. Um, what are the eight sections of the exam? So section one is QuickBooks solutions for clients. So that'll, that's discussing like the different subscriptions that I had mentioned in the intro and um, what what the different, um, the differences between this uh, different subscriptions. I'm trying to think. It's been a while since I've taken, taken the exam. Uh, section two is the client onboarding. So that's when you're bringing on your, your client, the process of it. So obviously in the beginning, you're, you're just getting started. You need to sit and meet with the client, see what their needs are, um, getting them set up, uh, bringing their um, information into the program, whether they're you know switching from desktop or they have only Excel files, or maybe they were doing manual accounting. Um, section three, special client onboarding tasks. So that's like um, users, identifying users that'll be uh, accessing your client's information, apps that the client um, might uh, already want or that you might want to introduce them to. Also sales tax needs. Uh, section four, managing your clients and um, work. That also deals with um, setting up users and what access they have. So you might have um, a client that has several employees and they don't want an employee to be able to see um, uh, uh, payroll information um, or how much other employees are making, or they don't want have them to have access um, to banking information. They only want them to have access to, let's say, customers. So it talks about all the different type of users and their access um, and how uh, you can set up client requests and respond back and forth with your client. Um, section five, supporting your small business clients. So um, vendor credits, um, estimates, chat, explaining to your customer how they can change an estimate um, to an invoice and so on. And then the last uh, three sections are pretty self-explanatory reporting. So looking at all the different financial reports um, and what they might explain, you know, they might say something like, I I remember mine, I had a question about, I had a couple of questions about um, accounts receivable. Um, and I thought, ooh, you know, they just jumped out so quickly enough. Some of them were so easy. <laughs> and then some of them not so much. Uh, section seven, banking and tools. So bank reconciliation, bank feeds. How do you um, process the bank feed? Um, process it uh, efficiently so that when you do the reconciliation process, it's easier. Um, dealing with issues in the um, reconciliation uh, process with clients, common errors that might uh, come about, and then preparing client books. So that's the end of year process. Um, pretty self-explanatory. I can't think of, uh, I, I feel like the last couple, like section six, seven, and eight kind of flew by for me personally. Um, so I can't think of all the different topics, but what I am going to do after this is I am going to put a video for each section of the exam to kind of prepare you a little bit more. Maybe address some of that 10 to 20 percent that I that isn't covered in the videos, because <laughs> like I said, I think the videos and the tutorials are great, but it's in my opinion that they cover about 80 to 85 percent of what's on the exam. There's still that little bit which should be not self knowledge. It should be knowledge that you've already acquired working in the field or in the classrooms that you have um, taken and the training opportunities. So the pro advisor journey. So you, you set up your QBOA and what's the journey that you're going to take? I just showed you the training. And so it's step one, just kind of getting out there, get training, do some networking, um, do some webinars. And then as well as, like I told you, they do have a training for QBOA. Once you sign up and you give them your email, they'll be 
um, contacting you. I should have brought my email up. I'll do that in a future one where I get offers all the time to go to different um, in-person training opportunities. I love that. So I'll bring up my email and show you how often I get those um, invites. But then also, you know, uh, uh, online um, conferences and webinars. So you're here, you're at the QBO certification. You wanna take that exam and get certified. As well as you're here, you wanna get all those CPE credits, those continuing professional education credits by taking training and recording that and keeping a file where you have all of that recorded to be able to prove like, look, you know, I have this much experience. This is what I'm gonna bring to your company or if you're talking to a client what i'm going to bring to your business and doing your books so that's where you're at right now i'm assuming if you're watching my video you're here and here all right the next step after that in the pro um advisor journey is getting advanced certification and so that's what i would touch on after we go through the journey of getting you um certified all right